I watched my father bleed to death on his living room floor in Oklahoma City while the paramedics tried to inflate the body bags around his legs to push the blood back up into his torso. It didn't matter at that point. His eyes were red like the old time cameras. I remember him calling out to his wife, my stepmother. Baby, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I think those were the last words I heard him utter. And in that moment, I realized that that ending that he was experiencing was waiting for me. I was heading down the same path. I was drinking a lot. Using other substances too. All in the attempt to feel nothing. That was my objective. That was my goal. To numb out until I felt nothing. Sometimes that comes with blackout. So man, you got to be careful with that shit. Because you do stuff and... You don't even know what you did. And you have to suffer the derision, rightfully so, the derision of your friends the next day. Your using partners, more like it. I digress. Yes, I was made aware in that moment that this is how I would end. Now, in these few months that I had been out there, because I had been playing ping pong, that's what you do when you are the child of a divorced uh, parents, when you're a child of divorced parents, you learn to play ping pong and you wear out one welcome and then you go to the other one. You, you know, you give the, the brush fire that you left behind time to cool out and regrow and, <clears throat> and on and on it goes. Mm, so, there I was, Oklahoma City. Because I burned out my welcome with mom. I was always good with numbers. I'd landed a job at an accounting firm doing taxes. It was that time of year. How convenient. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a license. <laughs> Mom or dad drove me to work. It's amazing what the young mind can do, even when it is anesthetizing itself as heavily as I was. I was still crack with numbers. <laughs> So I was doing people's tax returns for this accounting firm on a satellite office in Oklahoma City. I was given a receptionist. Her name was Judy. <laughs> a beautiful, sweet, religious. A lot of good, there's a lot of good religion out there. There is. Spiritual, Christian girl. Blonde, blue-eyed, absolutely beautiful. She used to call me swine lips. That was her term of endearment for me. That was hard working next to that girl for those months. She came at me and came at me. And I had nothing to give her inside. And I knew that. I was into the throes of my... I was into the arms of my mistress so heavily at that point. Ethyl alcohol. There was no room. And there was really nothing of value to offer this woman anyway, this young lady. The firm transferred me to Tucson, Arizona. Whew. Got away from that. Because that was tugging on my heartstrings daily. Oh. Tucson, Arizona. Absolutely left to my own devices. No family members of any kind. 18, 19, whatever the hell I was. <laughs> Please. It was beautiful. The rings under my eyes went away, 107 degrees. You don't feel it. It's a dry kind of heat. The moon is like a ball at night. It is. No, you can reach out and you can grab it as if you're plucking uh, an apple from the tree. I want to say yablaka. Russian for apple. Yablaka. 
and the shooting stars please. Ho hum. Horny toads, little little miniature dinosaurs, triceratopses, the horny toads. <laughs> Different world, beautiful world. Keep off the gravel. <laughs> Vintage cars sitting under carports with a, not a lick of rust on them. We're in the desert, people. Yep, that's where it all just sort of everything just blew up. Lost my job, lost everything. Didn't have much to lose anyway, really, but what little I did have, I lost. Called mom. Nah, she'd been day eight or Alan on by this point. She had some uh, she had some she had some uh, she had some ammunition, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you Alkies out there know what I'm saying. She agreed to take me back. <laughs> Bus trips, oh my good golly, bus trips, oh, they're a special kind of hell all their own. And the people that you meet on them, well, hell, you're one of them, <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, by the time I'd gotten to St. Louis, I was so shit-faced, they wouldn't let me on the bus. And then apparently, I, was, I don't remember a lot of it, but apparently I was, I was slightly unruly as I then found myself in the circle surrounded by five uh, St. Louis, you know, city police officers. <laughs> Needless to say, I didn't get on that that bus. <laughs> Got on the one after that, or the one after that, when they deemed I was sober enough to get on it. Because hell, they didn't want me. They didn't want me to keep moving on too. That's the way it is with people like me in that condition. The local law enforcement don't want nothing to, with, to do with you. Man, I've been pulled over in cars in Texas, and they're just like, and all four of us in there, oh, it's pretty shady. They don't go. Just keep moving. That's that's reality, folks. When it's riffraff like us, that's reality. They don't want nothing. Just keep going. Get out of my state. So, yeah, they let me on the bus. Hell, I was still drunk from days of partying. Partying. Uh, what a misnomer. Joplin, Missouri. I'm looking out that window. Let me tell you, it sets big in the Midwest. I had that moment of spiritual clarity that we talk about in the fellowship. AA, and I've heard it in other places. Because I was probably legally, you know, I wasn't passing no field sobriety tests. Even then. And I heard the voice. I'd heard it before. Well, I heard it this time. Unmistakably. I, was it emanating from my toenails? My earlobes? I don't know where the voice was coming from, but I could hear it all through my being. That gentlemanly whispering voice. And it said, it asked, do you see how that sun is setting? And I, my eyes were wide because my soul was attuned to the voice. I had tuned into the voice. I couldn't help it. I had interfaced with the voice spiritually, soulfully. And I was very much attuned to the voice. And I stared at the sun. And then the voice said, it's setting on your drinking. You never have to drink again if you don't want to. Okay. Huh. Wow. I had no idea what just happened to me just then. I, I didn't even realize it. It wasn't an either or. <laughs> that little voice transformed me. Because when it said that, you don't have to drink again if you don't want to, the desire to destroy myself was removed. You may call it a spiritual awakening, if you like, if that is more palatable. But I was in some way transformed inside. I was a different being. I didn't know what day it was. 
when you walked into the room. Oh, love that song. <gasps> Rob the Mod Stewart. He's singing about his love for Rob. Football, soccer, did you know that? <laughs> I digress again. But I wanted to, because it's Rob the Mod Stewart, so go screw yourself. Oh. I didn't know what date it was. I'm just looking at this sun, man. I'm like, oh, so I don't have to drink again if I don't want to. Well, the date was September 6th. The next day was September 7th. And I didn't drink that day. And I think I can. it's fair to say that's the first day in many days at that point that I hadn't drank or used any other illicit drugs. September 7th is my mother's birthday. I didn't, again, as God is my witness, I couldn't have told you what day it was, what date it was, barely what month it was. Barely. I'd like to think of it like this, that our father, my brother and my father, our father, was the only man our mother ever really, you know, <laughs> okay? He was the only one. And she got to watch him drink himself to death from a distance. Cue up the Bette Midler there, huh? I'm told that I look an awful lot. In fact, to the point I've seen pictures of myself in youth and my father in youth, and I've mistaken the two of us. Uh, and my disposition is certainly a lot like his. And so I can only wonder that perhaps the God of my understanding looked at my mother and said, you know what? You're a pretty good lady. You've pretty much raised these two boys by yourself. Tell you what, happy birthday, lady. I mean, I choose to believe that, that the higher power of my understanding condescended and he chose to place his hand upon my mother and upon me in that moment and say, no, 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 let's change this storyline. The, the, the lady has suffered enough because she's watched the only love of her life drink himself to death, and now she's watching her son, one of her two sons, follow the same path. I'd like to believe that at least. Yes, coincidences. Again, it's said in AA, if I haven't said it before in other stories here on YouTube, we say in AA it's when the higher power chooses to remain anonymous. The oddest, the oddest, the most unlikely of coincidences occur. Favorably too, isn't that funny? It's, as Dr. Tony Evans would say, when God is involved, it's a win-win-win situation. Hey, peace.